Alrighty guys, welcome back to a new episode of Trails of Cold Steel. We found out that the Phantom Thief was Blue Blanc and we are here to do some work. We returned to Crimson Tiara and uh, we solved his puzzles even though we overlooked a couple of things several times. My first instinct was like, oh, this place, this place, this place. And I kept like going back. I'm like, oh, okay, obviously it's not here, but apparently I kept missing it. Like on my first attempts, like looking for areas, but here we are doing work and uh welcome back to more trails of cold steel let's see what we get into ourselves this time this episode how can i ever thank you i almost get the impression we're the reason he stole it in the first place maybe we should apologize to you nah nah we don't we don't play that blame game we don't play that nonsense he stole it because he was a dick that's being way too nice phantom thieves beads conquest have always seen rather capricious like rain i don't even know why you would say that because in reality you would probably be like well technically we didn't really steal it like that man like we didn't we didn't cause this man rain is talking about oh maybe we should apologize for what for what but this dude being a dick for just just running his mind game if anything i respect this dude <laughs> Given how fixated on us he seemed, I don't think that's all at all likely. Though it is creepy that he's following around high schoolers. Like, what are you doing, my guy? Blue Blanc. Are you that bored with life you gotta follow around high schoolers? The last thing we want is to cause more confusion here. Alright. Alright, give me one second, guys. I have to write down something in my notes something that is very important that i write down <laughs> here we go i have to leave a timestamp when i split this episode so i don't have to like look for it but please take this as a token of my thanks all element sepith 500 nice this is a lot of sepith are you sure it's all right to give us that much it almost feels like we like more than we deserve this is a jewelry boutique after all. We have more stuff that's lying around than what we know what to do with. Oh man, that makes sense, but thanks. It's the least I could do after all that you've done for us. We're good on HD space, by the way. Thanks for, you know, reminding me to look at the HD space. We're good with HD space. All right, let's get it. I'm glad to see the TR came back safely after all. It glimmered so beautifully, though. I can see why the thief wanted it. All right. You guys got it back amazing. You're all students, right? What kind of school do you go to where you learn how to bust up thieves? Military school, fam. Come on now. Technically, a Korean military school. I heard they're like military is OD. Chi China and the Koreans military is kind of OD to my uh, knowledge. That was quite exhausting. Phantom Thief B was e an even more unpleasant fellow than I had expected. Annoying to think his smug face was watching us the whole time. Well, though his name is pretty well known around here. He was plainly suspicious even when we first met him. But I didn't suspect he proved this much of a troublemaker. I was just thinking he must be incredibly skilled. He disguised himself so well that he was virtually unrecognizable, not to mention all those other things he did. If this were martial arts we were talking about, he'd definitely be at the master level. I can't disagree. Look at that. Respect. Why, why would someone try to like that? Um, why would someone like that try to mess with us? He, spe he specifically asked for group A too, though I can't imagine why. Is it my father again? Yeah, this is class seven, group A. Rean Swords is speaking. Here comes Sarah. Hello, hello. Sounds like you've been keeping yourself busy. I know it's you, instructor Sarah. Oh, got it in one. How'd you guess? Don't tell me it's your smoldering love for your tragic. Nope, I just knew it. It was predictable timing. Uh, many feelings about you, but love would be stretching it. <laughs> anyway, you don't usually call us while we're out in the field study. Something wrong? There's something I like group A to go. Somewhere I like them to go. When you finish up what you have to do for the st field study, I'd like you to head over to the Sanct District. That's where Heimdall Cathedral and the em embassies are, right? I think the Leeds Academy is somewhere around there too. Uh-oh. 
That's the place. I want you all to assemble outside the Saint Austria. Austria. Oh my God! Here it goes. That that school's name I can never pronounce. The girls' school at five o'clock. That's where sister attends. Group B will be there too. Oh snap! What? Don't worry. I already informed the governor about this. So go ahead and enjoy yourselves. Anyway, have fun. Toodles. Hey, she gave us a free day. What's wrong now? Sounded as though the instructor is being as her being her usual irresponsible self. Pretty much. I don't know what she's thinking. Rain explained to, to the rest of the team what was going on. Oh, I know where that is. That girl's academy for nobles. Isn't that one of your sisters uh, where your atten uh, sister attends? I have a few acquaintances who attend there myself, but I can't imagine why she have us meet up there. Girls Academy, huh? I'm kind of curious. I'm sure she has a reason. Where ones probably. It's almost evening, so we should uh, finish up there and uh, head over. Oh no, I forgot to do that. I forgot to do that. I almost dread to think what we're gonna have to do when we get there though. All right. All right, let's get to it. <laughs> yeah, yeet, yeet, yeet. Here we go. We gotta go on a tram. We need to go to the Sank District, but we can probably maybe do a hidden quest. Is there supposed to be someone here, right? Or is that tomorrow? Well, it doesn't matter. I'll just save it to a different file, just to, just in case. I don't think there's anything we can really do at the moment. All right, here we go. Let's go to the Sanct District. And I doubt we'll have time to do every, anything else once we arrive at the Sanct District. Should we get going? Cause the main story to advance. Is there anything we need to do right now? Not now. Let's actually take a look at our... Let's go to... OST District. No, Vanquire. Welcome back, everybody, to more Trails of Cold Steel. Uh, we have to go to the Sink District. So in order to get there, I think we need to go to the Heimdall Port, which is strange. Um, that's strange. Aren't I, sh shouldn't I be able to go there? Uh, do, I have to take a specific tram there, right? Yeah, I have to take this tram or something. Yeah, there we go. I gotta take that tram. But anyway, yeah, we're about to head off to the Sink District. I had to like reload, you know, do a couple of things. I didn't really do anything in the game, but I just had to fix some stuff going on the stream. But anyway, we're going to the Sink District and we're going to be moving on. I don't know what game we're going to be doing for the next 24 hours if we miss, uh, if we if we make it, but it'll probably be. Well, once again, it'll probably be like PQ2 or Trails of Cold Steel 2. Or Trails of Cold Steel again, depending on if we beat it or not. Here we go. But... It's, it's, it's really up to... It's really up to the chat. Superman 64. If y'all want to see me play Superman 64... Donate five bits. That deal is subject to change even if you cheer five bits. <laughs> it was subject to change, by the way, and it just changed. <laughs> Thanks for the 145 bits, Yuki. <laughs> yeah, they must go to St. Australia too. <laughs> so the famous Saint Astraya Girls School is around here, huh? Astraya, Astraya, remember that guy, Astraya, Astraya. Oh God, Jedi just came into the chat. Uh oh, it just got real. It's supposed to be a combined middle and high school <laughs> Thanks exclusively for the, 100 bits. for the young ladies of the nobility. Yeah, this is one part of the capital that the masses have no reason to visit. Although I can at least support the school's commitment <laughs> to fostering chastity and rejecting materialism. You seem to know an awful lot about a fancy girl's school. Oh boy. D no, no, I don't. This is all just common knowledge. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, dude. let's go and wait by the front gate. Yeah, those were the instructor's orders. 
I'm feeling kind of nervous, actually. Dude, it's just girls, man. What you gotta be scared of? Yeah, man, one of them might talk to you, but you know how to talk to girls. You talk to your sister all the time. Quit playing. Come on, man. Why would you? Oh snap. We got a bit... We got a bit <laughs> war. To men, this academy must seem clad in the mysterious, impenetrable aura of feminine nobility. Impenetrable aura? I was wondering... Did you not want to come here, Laura? My father did recommend it to me, but they offered no classes in the martial arts. That alone was reason enough to look elsewhere. <laughs> I can totally understand that. Though I get the feeling Laura would cause a real uproar if she went to a school for genteel young ladies. Genteel. Yeah. I can picture the chaos now. <laughs> oh? I have a number of acquaintances who attend there, and from all I hear, it does seem to be a wonderful school. I've heard that even Princess Alfin herself is a student there. I've heard that too. Princess who? Alfin? Princess Alfin lied? You've seriously never heard of her? I know you're not from Erebonia, but even still. <laughs> to be fair, I wouldn't be surprised if plenty of Erebonians didn't know who she is. Princess Alfin is the daughter of our reigning emperor, His Majesty Emperor Eugent. She's supposed to be as sweet as an angel and popular with everyone. Is that so? <laughs> Actually, I believe she's the same age as Fee. I've had the opportunity to meet her once before. She truly is as charming as the rumors suggest. I figured as much. I've seen photographs of her plenty of times in magazines, though I've never had the opportunity to meet her. Sounds like she's in the same school year as Elise, come to think of it. She has a twin brother, too, Prince Cedric. Oh, yeah. So, they're, okay, for some reason, I think the characters inside the game also witness the cutscenes that we view. We know that she has a twin brother and then another brother, right? They're all related. It was three of them royalties. One of them's gonna die. That's just how these games play out. One of these royalties is gonna die. War gonna break out. People, a lot of people gonna die. And it's gonna be a chain effect. The environment's gonna go crazy. I don't know. That's why there's four of these games. Shit gets serious. He's the crown prince of Erebonia. I think I've seen a picture of the prince in a magazine before. Dark blonde hair, like Yusus' brother, right? Oh, I think you're thinking of Prince Oliver. He's Cedric and Alfin's older brother. Why isn't he the crown prince then? I've heard the reason is that his mother was a commoner. It seems like a stupid reason to deny him the right of succession, but that's how nobles do things. I feel like I've been hearing his name a lot lately. He made a big splash when he came back from the burrow aboard that airship. Uh, you know the one, right? Ah, oh, you must be referring to his return aboard the Arcel. After the crisis in Laboral was put to rest. Yeah, I remember seeing that. It really made a big impact. I'd never seen an airship that looked so white and elegant before. I believe my father went to welcome the prince back in his capacity as Imperial Governor, too. And yeah, now that you mention it, that does seem to be when I started hearing his name around a lot more. Ready. 
Girl's voice. Um, there they go. Ah, you made it. They're the team. <laughs> it's good to see you all again. You're a bunch of early birds, aren't you? Well, we just about finished up everything we had to do when we got the call to meet here. Were you able to finish up everything on your end, too? <laughs> As if we'd leave any loose ends. If not for our unfamiliarity with the city, we would have been finished this morning. Ugh, every time. Every single time, that's right. Make him angry. Make him angry, Uses. Looks like getting these two to kiss and make up will be an uphill battle. <laughs> well, some say that when someone gets under your skin, it means you really care about what they think. <laughs> Wait, did you two... Yep, that's right. They finally got together. <laughs> I figured the girls would be the first to notice. They finally, um, aren't throwing punches mentally at each other. Of course. I, um, I apologize for any worry I've caused you. We're fine now. Really? That's great! <laughs> it sure is. Maybe after this field study is over, we can get together and spend the night talking in one of our rooms. Sounds good. <laughs> The thought of a class 7 pajama party makes me a little embarrassed. <laughs> hey, it makes me uh, excited, actually. Uh, so can we get this pajama party uh, underway? I'm just saying. I've always wanted to experience a pajama party, and I'm just trying to do that right now. That's girls for you. <laughs> <laughs> girls and sleepovers go together like jam and toast, huh? Hey, man, sleepovers is just generally fun. You ever slept over at your best friend's house and y'all stayed up all night playing video games, eating junk food? That, you re you, me you remember those days, all right? Yep, y'all better make those memories, man. Ever since I was a kid, dude, I, I always enjoyed just watching, like, movies late at night and just playing games and staying up just with other people, man. That's, that's the life, as a kid, at least. <laughs> Now it's like, I want to Netflix and chill by myself and my waifu, everybody else leave me alone. That must be Heimdall Cathedral's <laughs> bell. Driving their parents crazy, yeah, staying up all night, yelling at video games. It has a solemn, stately sound, you know, you say? asking your parents to order pizza, and they can't say no since your friend over, because it'll make you look poor as hell, so you gotta do it. Come on, Ma. It sounds so different from how it does in the Oz District. Though that makes sense considering the distance. That bell ringing must mean it's five o'clock, which means it's almost the time we were supposed to meet here. All right, what does Sarah do? Sarah's gonna show up, isn't she? Rain? Rain? Elise, what are you doing here? I go to school here, you dumbass. Wait, I guess this is your school, <laughs> so where else would you all be? Right, all right, he corrected himself. He stopped himself from getting, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, before he, before he got, uh, dunked on. Um, yes. I see all of your classmates are with you, too. Alright, so what I, what I need y'all to do, if you don't know this character name, Ore, uh, spelled O-R-I-E, look her up right now and tell me she don't look exactly like Elise. Go ahead, I'll wait. Google, Google, Undernight and Birth, Ore, O-R-I-E. And she'll just look exactly like this. <laughs> it's only been a week since we saw you, hasn't it? <laughs> well, we were told to meet here. Wait a minute. Are you the ones? Are you the ones? The nine guests I was told to expect at five o'clock sharp? Oh, yikes. Well, there are nine of us in class seven. Wait, what? Then that would mean... You're the one we were told wanted us to come here? Actually, I suspect that would be a friend of mine. Uh-oh, the princess? Why does she always have to be such a mischief maker? <laughs> I swear. Oh, here we go. Shenanigans. She could have at least given me a little warning that you are coming. Um, 
Elise. Anyway, where are my manners? Welcome to St. Astraya Girls' School. I hope you'll enjoy your visit. Right this way. Hey, where the tomboys at, though? I'm getting tired of these proper girls. I want a tomboy. I'm tired of all this. The only tomboy is Angelica, but she don't like boys. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. We can still hang, but damn. <laughs> Imagine a dude wanting a tomboy. Boys? I don't think I've ever seen that uniform before. That, is, that uniform from Thor's military. My brother studied them when he was younger. Isn't that the military academy in for a dry cause? Dude, they already openly discussing oh my god isn't that lady laura she always looks so gallant oh you think she's transferring here with the boys i don't think so isn't that blonde boy usus he's an angel you think that boy's a foreigner he's so tall yep get dunked on he'll dunk on all y'all that redhead is so cute he's talking about elliot that silver haired girl looks like she needs a hug <laughs> they gossiping so loudly dude we can hear you guys I can feel the stairs bo <laughs> boring holes in my head. Hmm, pay them no mind. They didn't say nothing about Reen. We certainly do seem to be the stars of the show today. And Laura's as popular as ever. I can't say that being admired doesn't feel nice, but... Please, don't be too hard on them. We don't have many opportunities to meet people from outside the school. You think that boy in front of his uh, commoner? I'm not sure, but either way, he looks so handsome. Hey, do you think they know at least? Actually, you're right. This is kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> Are they the same age as you at least? I don't know and I don't care. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to mack one of these up. At least you got to tell me. Come on, sis. You got to hook me up with one of your friends. Come on, sis. We we brother and sister. Hook me up What's with your here? friend. It looks like an indoor garden. This is the Academy's Rose Garden. The person who called you here is waiting inside. Oh, it's Sarah, isn't it? Who did call us here anyway? I mean, technically Sarah did. Whoever they are, they must have considerable social standing. Your Highness, I brought the guests. Oh, God. Wait, the princess. Thank you. Please show them in. Nani? Oh. No way. Hey, Elise, is that... You don't need to ask when you already know. Now, if you'll follow me... <laughs> Elise is starting to... <laughs> She's trying to stay ahead of the game, not behind. <laughs> I... I knew it! I knew it! The princess! <laughs> I'm the mastermind behind this entire game. You must fight me now. Princess Alfin, the final boss. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen of Class 7. This is a bad ending, huh? Bad ending, boys? My name is Alfin. Alfin Rice Arner. Rice? It's a pleasure to meet all of you. Rice? Like, not Rice, but Rice? <laughs> oh, boy. I'm pretty sure we reached the the goal for the two the the 250, because I'm counting all the bits I wrote down, and I'm pretty sure we we reached it. <laughs> if I include the 32 that we already got, plus the the crazy amount of bits, yeah, yeah, we reached that goal. <laughs> Sorry, all right. All right. I was only trying to tease you a little. <clears throat> tease you a little? She don't even seem bothered by it. Don't you have something you wanted to discuss with everyone? Please go right ahead. I'm sorry. I was just trying to hook you and your brother up. <laughs> like. <woo. sighs> well, that aside, it's been a long time since I last saw both of you, Yusus and Laura. Oh, so she knows Yusus and Laura. I'm glad to see you're both well. Likewise, your highness. <laughs> You've become even more fetching since we last met. Aw, thank you. I was 
was rather hoping that you'd decide to enroll in St. Astraya too. But it seems you chose to attend Thor's after all. Well, I've committed myself to following the way of the sword, and Thor's gives me a place to hone my skills. I apologize for not being able to live up to your expectations. Ah, <sighs> first I lost Angelica to Thor's, then you too. Perhaps I should just transfer there next year myself. I wonder if she does. Y your highness. <laughs> That'd be epic. <laughs> Got you to look. <laughs> Got him. But, but I... <laughs> Well, she seems lively. She seems far more easygoing than I was expecting. I've heard plenty about her, but none of that prepared me for meeting her in person. So, this is what it's like to be in the presence of royalty. It's actually rather overwhelming. I can see why people always compare her to an angel. <laughs> me too. Please don't worry here. about me. Well, I still have much to learn before I feel like I deserve my status among the nobility. I've been blessed with wonderful friends, and I'm enjoying life here at the Academy. Well, she does seem to have at least one wonderful friend. Kind of an understatement when that friend happens to be Princess Elfin. <laughs> I'm particularly happy to finally be able to meet you, Reen Schwarzer. <laughs> Elise has told me so much about you. <laughs> y your Highness! Um, I'm honored that you'd say so. Elise always mentions in her letters what a great friend she has. As her brother, I wanted to thank you for that. <laughs> Reen? Oh, it's so refreshing. You're every bit the person Elise says you are. Perhaps even more so. Huh? Actually, I have a teensy-weensy favor to ask. Do you think I could join oh. Elise in thinking of you as my dear brother as well? <laughs> what? Nani? Y your Highness! You see, Elise has spoken of you so often that in my heart, you've already come to feel like family. <laughs> and now that I've had the opportunity to meet you, I fear I simply can't suppress these feelings any longer. What is this? What is happening right now, dude? I have two brothers already, of course, so I'm sure it won't take long to adjust. <laughs> I, I couldn't possibly. She is I trolling mean... so hard, dude. <laughs> That's enough, your highness. <laughs> Aw, don't be so stingy. Surely it wouldn't hurt to share him with me a little. What is up with these sister-brother complexes, man? <laughs> anyway, that aside. The reason I called you here today was not to talk with me. There is someone else who would like to meet you. My brothers. Why? It's not like we're famous. Who do you mean? Hey, isn't that... A guitar? No, a lute? <laughs> oh, it seems he's arrived! Older brother, right? Oh! Huh. I apologize for keeping you waiting. Matthew Marcer, Alexander the Great. What's his name? Yeah, this dude's gonna die, isn't he? He's gonna die. It's a pleasure to see you again. Don't tell me. He's probably gonna die. And I 100% just have a feeling that this guy is just... He has a, he has a killable face, so... <laughs> and you as well, young lady? One of these kids are gonna die, all right? They have to for, for, for impact. Well, I trust everyone here has been making <laughs> themselves comfortable? Nobody needs to confirm or deny anything. I just, I just want y'all to know one of these kids are dying. One of these kids at this table are going to meet a horrible fate. <laughs> Who's this guy? I'm not sure, though I feel like I've seen him somewhere before. I serve as a music instructor in the hallowed halls of this fine academic institution. In truth, I am ever on the hunt for that elusive mayfly we call love. But that might raise eyebrows at a girl's school. <laughs> but whose pulse would not quicken wandering into this untainted cloister of dew-eyed maidens? Ah, oh, the romance. Huh? 
Could he be? <laughs> I think that's quite enough. Hit him with the fan. Any more of that, and our guests may start edging toward the exit. Ah, oh, I can always count on you to never miss a beat, my dear. Princess sister. Alpha and fans into the fray. Yes, the fifth DLC character, freaking Rain Swords, are in this match. That'd be actually hilarious. Oh, wait. Wow. Indeed. Prince Oliver. Tis I, Oliver Rice Arner. Rice. Also known by some unscrupulous individuals as the debaucherous prince. <laughs> I also serve as Thor's military academy's ornamental chairman of the board. It's a pleasure to finally meet you, lady. The ladies of class seven, really? Really? What about the guys, dude? That's sexist, man. Get him out of here. See, he sounds more like, not Fox, but he sounds more like, I know that's Matthew Mercer. Fox has more of a chill voice, but he has that, uh, what is his voice from Stella Glow? The Knight from Stella Glow. I almost said the spoiler name, but that's not him. What's his name? I have name? to admit, I was surprised to learn that you're the he's chairman a, of the he, board of he's directors. He's like, Sir I know Highness. your weakness. I forgot his name. Somebody in the chat knows who I'm talking about. From Stella Glow, Klaus. Klaus? Yeah, Klaus. There we go. I'd heard that the chairman was a member of the Imperial family, but still. All right. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Who would expect the infamous prodigal son to chair a committee at a prestigious academy like Thor's? I suppose it's not surprising they'd rather keep it hushed up, though. It wouldn't exactly be great for the school's image. That's surprisingly forthright, coming from you. Is it really true, though? I mean, that you were the one responsible for establishing Class 7, Your Highness? Indeed, I was. Hmm, that's interesting. Why would he do that? You see, it's always been a tradition that a member of the Imperial family serves as chairman of the board. At first, I wore the title and name only, but I had a change of heart after my vacation in Liberal two years ago. He must have seen some shit. You were in Liberal back then? That would put your visit during the incident that occurred there, correct? Man, it looks like he's seen some shit. Right. All I've done since I returned to Erebonia has been inspired by my experience during the crisis in Liberal. As a result, fruitless though they may prove to be, I've set a number of plans in motion. One of which is to bring the winds of change to Thor's military academy. A gust of fresh air, if you will. Winds of change, huh? I can only assume you're referring to our class? Then the one who decided to throw both commoners and nobles into the same class was... Yes, the idea was mine. Although the selected students also had to have a high aptitude with the Arcus units too. How, how do they I test think I'm out? I'm finally starting to understand the reasoning behind but class. I want to know how the hell did they test out who had high uh, aptitude with the Arcus? How do they test? You have good aptitude for this. You have good aptitude for that. Because of some test, there had to be something more than that. There had to be some kind of like physical monitoring. Like th there had to be something. And why we're being sent all over Erebonia on these field studies? to show us firsthand and give us cause to consider the conflict between the two factions. That is the purpose behind our field studies, is it? That is one of the reasons, yes. However, my foremost intention was to show you that during your lives, you will encounter many obstacles and conflicts, not just between factions, but between the capital and the provinces, tradition and technology, even between nations. In these turbulent times, I thought that this would provide the hands-on education today's promising youths need. We need up-and-comers who can think and act independently to face tomorrow's challenges head-on. That makes sense. Wow, that's quite a plan. 
Like I, I know I that the, the previous class. I'm sure Toa, whether we can live up to such uh, high Crow, expectations. Angelica and Big Boy tested it out or whatever, but it's like, how did they know that these characters would actually like have high aptitudes? Just based off of their test exams, their test scores. Hearing your explanation has, at the very least, cleared up many of the doubts I've had up to this point. Last seven just does sing, seem like just an ideal environment test to expand one's outlook on life, though. I feel like going through everything we have so far has brought us closer to doing exactly that. Yep. Marvelous. I'm so pleased to hear it. Just listening to you makes me feel even more certain that establishing Class 7 was the right decision. Especially since while the idea itself was mine, I have no real say in how the classes run day to day. Even so, I still hope to meet all of you at least once, if only to tell you all this. That was when Alfin stepped in and offered to set up this little meeting. I see. <laughs> well, I could hardly refuse such a sincere request from my brother. But it also presented me a fine chance to finally meet <laughs> Elise's beloved brother, as I've always wanted to. She's still trolling! She's still trolling! Your Highness! <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to tell us all of this, Your Highness. I feel like now that I know, I want to live up to the promise you saw in Class 7. Thing is, am I right in assuming that Class 7 doesn't exist just to fulfill your progressive ideal? What are you... Oh? The board has its chairman, of course, but three directors besides. My older brother Rufus, Imperial Governor Carl Regnitz, and Irina Reinford of the Reinford Group. Oh, yeah. Now that you mention it... They do seem to have certain expectations for us. Irina Reinford of the Reinford, you know, you know, group. That, I don't know why that sounded funny to me. It, it kind of reminds me of Dell's Dim Dome of the... I don't know... Dell Dimsdale, home of the... I don't know. Y'all know what I'm trying to reference, but that's what that reminds me. When he said Irina Reinford, you know, of the Reinford group. I just thought that was fun. <laughs> Precisely. I'm, I just thought it was. As I mentioned, <laughs> I no longer have anything to do with how Class 7 is run. That authority lies with the directors. As you're keenly aware, Rufus and Governor Regnitz sit on opposite sides of the factional divide. And while Chairman Arena is mostly involved with Class 7's technology, like the Arcus, her intentions are a mystery to me. And it's those three who decide where you'll travel for your field studies. Is that right? When you put it that way, it does make it seem like some kind of bargaining is taking place behind the scenes. It was one of the conditions they gave in exchange for allowing Class 7 to be established. I'll admit, I hesitated to allow it, but I decided to place my hopes in you. We believed then, as we still do, that one day, you all will be a great light that can push back the darkness of this country. <laughs> well, I suppose when I put it that way, it sounds positively heroic. But that's just me. Don't feel too pressured by it. Your students, first and foremost, reach out and grab that fragrant rose of school life. Join a club. Eat cheap food with your friends at midnight. All in love. We live but once. Make your youth count. <laughs> you know, it's weird, but hearing you say that kind of takes a load off my mind. By the way, just earlier you said that we believed the Class 7 would be a great light. Is there someone else involved with Thoris who shares your vision for our class, Your Highness? There is. Principal Van Dyke. I once attended Thor's myself and studied under him. He gave my proposal to establish Class 7 his full backing. I always call them Principal Van Dyck. I think that's the first time they actually vo said it via voice. Van Dyke. I see. I could have overlooked it. I don't know. He's been particularly considerate toward us ever since we arrived at the Academy. While he has no direct control over the running of the Academy, he does preside over the board meetings. And above all, he's the one who assembled an excellent team to give you first-rate training. An excellent team, you say? Are you referring to Instructor Sarah? <laughs> well, she's certainly one of them. Still, 
Coaxing her away from her former line of work certainly played a large part in giving Class 7 a great foundation. She is, after all, one of the strongest people in the Empire, and her experience makes her a natural field leader. Wait, what? Instructor Sarah? One of the strongest people in Erebonia? I believe it. I believe it. Exactly what experience might you be referring to? <laughs> I've even heard rumors of her daring exploits myself. She was known as the Purple Lightning. Doesn't that sound exciting? Damn. Wait. Purple Lightning? Wait a second. I knew it. If you two have heard of it, it must be a household name among martial artists. That's right. Though I've just heard it in passing. Ah, oh, that young ace of the Erebonian Bracer Guild, and one of the Empire's most famous bracers. She has a history full of brave feats and dangerous deeds. She was even the youngest bracer to achieve A-rank status. <laughs> Damn. Back then, she was known as the Purple Lightning. Now, you know her simply as your homeroom teacher. <laughs>